Intel 12th Gen News is upon us, and Gigabyte has sent us a Z690 Aorus Master Motherboard, £430, it's fairly high end. I'm going to do a very quick unboxing of the Master, and then I'm going to go through Gigabyte's presentation about their 690 series of motherboards. Lots of good information in there. Weighs an absolute ton. Cables, Wi Fi antenna, various M.2 screws, and a mysterious little, oh, little beeper for the uh, postcode. We can ignore all that. On the shelf behind me, I have a Z490 Master, not a 590, but a 490. Z490 Master measures 244 millimeters across because it's regular ATX. This fella is 260. It's a different form factor, it's bigger. You can also see the slots have moved around. We've got far more substantial finning on the M.2 covers down bottom. But broadly speaking, they've got an awful lot in common. You can see, as they say, the family DNA. Uh, similarly with the reinforced memory slots, albeit obviously we've gone from DDR4 to DDR5. The power connectors are in similar positions. You can understand why this is called a master, albeit it's sprouted an extra USB 3 header there, for example. And you can see by eye, we're dealing with many more VRMs. So yes, it's an Aorus master. Yes, we've skipped a generation from the 490 to 590 to 690. But this is right up towards the upper end of the scale. £430, on the other hand, is not monumental. It's merely somewhat expensive. I'm going to put this to one side and dive into Gigabyte's facts and figures. We open with the big question, why Intel Z690, which is of course a chipset rather than a platform or a processor, and specifically why Aorus Z690? So better VRM designs up to 20 plus 1 plus 2 phases of 105 amp smart power stage. DDR5, of course, better thermals. We're going to see this from every motherboard manufacturer, certainly at the high end at any rate. Faster storage and graphics interface, i.e. PCI Express Gen 5. So yes, also true, of course, at the moment there are no such things as Gen 5 storage or Gen 5 graphics, uh, although they will both be coming in the, the nearish future. Better connectivity, Thunderbolt 4, 10 gigabit Ethernet, USB 3.2 Gen 2x2, front USB Type-C, and every single motherboard uh, is going to run 2.5 gigabit or faster. Also, Wi-Fi 6E. We're going to see this from ASUS, MSI, Gigabyte for certain, no doubt the other manufacturers as well. This is the new normal. The new king of gaming platform, Aorus Z690 Gaming Motherboards. Again, all the manufacturers are going to be making similar claims at the moment. And then we move on to the specifics, fully direct digital VRM design. Uh, to support these new processors, they're going to chuck a load of juice at them. So you can look at 20 V-Core phases of 105 amps. The irony here being we're not expecting 12th gen processors to demand more power than the previous generations, even though they have more cores, more threads. However, the motherboard manufacturers have learned over the past few years, past five years since Ryzen launched, more power phases better, better quality power phases also, higher rated. 20 by 105 amps for the V-Core is just enormous. My guess is it's not going to be strictly necessary but on paper, it certainly looks good. A digital PWM controller, along with high quality MOSFETs and decent capacitors. Gigabyte has been pushing the other manufacturers forward in this area over the past few years. And then we get some further detail about the tantalum capacitors, which we understand cost a small fortune a piece. Hybrid cores optimization. This is of course going to the heart of 12th gen Alder Lake with the combination of performance cores and efficiency cores, exactly how well the 690 Master works compared to uh, the competition remains to be seen. 
but it is going to be an absolutely essential part of the performance on this new platform. DDR5 versus DDR4. This is, of course, not a gigabyte thing. Uh, it applies to the entire industry. But the facts and figures are in front of us. We're talking higher clock speeds, higher data transfer rates at a lower voltage compared to DDR4. Unfortunately, at the moment, latencies are fairly dire. Performance, we'll be getting into that in the very near future as we head towards our launch reviews. Native DDR5 unlocked voltage. This is not a gigabyte thing. This is how DDR5 works. The power is converted in the module. So what you're seeing here actually relates to DDR5 as a technology rather than a gigabyte feature. The auto boost DDR5 frequency to 5000 megahertz. This is something that we're expecting to see in biases that are coming rather than that are here at the moment, although it's possible this motherboard actually supports this feature out of the box, in which case that'll be interesting. Just as your processor can currently turbo, i.e. the speed can vary depending on the workload, so too DDR5 can also automatically boost. You don't do anything, it just responds to the workload. But as I say, we've been told by Intel that this is something that is coming with BIOS updates. DDR5 XMP Booster. With DDR5 and Z690, we're seeing XMP 3.0, which brings a number of changes. This slide is gigabyte take on XMP3. XMP 3.0 includes five profile slots, where XMP2 has two. So the presets go from two to three, and then you have two empty slots which you can configure yourself or copy from a friend or some such. So five XMP 3.0 slots. Extreme thermal design. Look at it. I mean, here we have it. The board is absolutely covered in great big chunks of metal, which are all intended to remove heat from your expensive memory, expensive storage and relatively expensive processor. This image here from Gigabyte about the finned arrays on the heatsink shows that compared to a traditional heatsink which has not a lot of surface area, they have increased surface area enormously. And then we move on to the details, so nano carbon coated fins on the Array 3 heatsink and direct touch heat pipe 2. Bigger heat pipe, better contact, more heat being moved away from the VRMs. Similarly with the M.2s, just look at the heatsink on that, as they say. Gen 4 M.2s can get blooming hot under load. Gen 5, obviously we haven't got a clue at the moment, but it's not gonna be any cooler than Gen 4. We can be quite clear about that. Smart Fan 6 hardware design. Gigabyte has really pushed fan control over the past few generations, but this just looks absolutely huge. 10 PWM or DC fan headers and a noise detection cable. Don't know what that's about, but that sounds interesting. Eight onboard temperature sensors and two external temperature sensor connectors. This is an entire system's worth of hardware monitoring and looks like really good news. Smart Fan 6 BIOS design. Smart Fan 5 is pretty blooming good, has five points of control when you're doing a custom curve. In Smart Fan 6, they've upped the stakes. You've now got seven points of control, plus presumably presets. A quick table showing PCI Express Gen 5 versus PCI Express Gen 4. Double. Nice and easy. And then we see some details of what Gigabyte is doing with PCI Express Gen 5. Again, this is true of the other manufacturers. And again, at present, we don't have any Gen 5 hardware. So it's just pretty pictures and words on the page. Intel Thunderbolt 4. This is obviously a feature Intel is supplying rather than motherboard manufacturers. And again, all the higher motherboards with Z690 are going to have Intel Thunderbolt 4. You pay a premium. The connection speed is absolutely huge. Similarly, 20 gigabit USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2 on all of Gigabyte's Z690 motherboards. And then front panel USB Type-C for all of Gigabyte's Z690 boards. Again, something we're seeing with other manufacturers as well. Nonetheless, it's welcome news. A Quantia 10 gigabit Ethernet, blazing fast, hugely expensive. Only going to see that on the most premium motherboards but 2.5 gigabit ethernet is going to be on a wide array of motherboards. Gigabit is fading away. Two and a half gigabit is the new thing. Similarly, Wi-Fi 6E, triple band, higher connection speeds. This is going to replace Wi-Fi 6. 
And then we come to tables showing the specs of the various motherboards, starting at the top with the Aorus Tachyon, which is fairly huge. The Aorus Extreme Water Force, custom block on all the important hardware. And the Aorus Extreme. The Tachyon is ATX. The Extreme Water Force and Extreme are both EATX. Obviously, that's the same board, but with different cooling. And as we move across the range to the Aorus Pro DDR4, and the Aorus Elite AX, Aorus Elite AX DDR4, you can see here the power delivery continues to be very high end. 16 phases for the V cores, 90 amps, 60 amps, and 70 amps, depending on the precise model. But the rest of the features on the list also extensive. Aorus Elite and Aorus Elite DDR4, both 16 phases for the V core. Obviously different memory support, just as the names suggest. And then as we step down to the Aorus Elite AX DDR4, we have 12 phases for the V-Core, but the rest of the features are still looking fairly impressive. And moving across the Aorus Elite DDR4, Aorus Ultra, and the Aorus Ultra DDR4, we go from 12 phases to 10 phases. But you can see that Gigabyte is clearly keen to offer both DDR5 and DDR4 across a large part of their Z690 product range. Having gone through the tables of the range of Gigabyte Z690 motherboards, both with DDR4 and DDR5, this Z690 Aorus Master looks like it's one of the most premium boards in the range. I'll be doing a full review of the Aorus Master in the near future, and I'm looking forward to seeing what exactly lies under this hugely heavy armour. We've got a lot of Alder Lake 12th Gen news coming up over the next week or so, and we're also going to have some full-on reviews of the CPUs and motherboards. This Gigabyte Z690 Aorus Master is going to be one of them.